Um, so we'll, then we'll learn how do we use a package called SciPy um, to do optimization. And again, um, this is our Newton's method. So it's like a one iteration. And uh, um, K is like zero, one, two, etc., cetera, up to till maybe say either we reach, we have reached um, the tolerance or um, we've reached our maximum number of iterations. Um, so this is Newton's method. If we, uh, let's, uh, so last time I didn't talk about this uh, from an intuitive perspective, okay? Um, first of all, we know that So this is uh, this is a good direction. I mean, um, because we learned that um, the gradient of f. Why it's called a good direction? Because this is a a direction um, in which f decreases, right? So, I mean, if we follow this direction, um, F will decrease. It's just a matter of like how, how F, how fast F will decrease. So that's where this takes into play. And uh, uh, that's why we need uh, the Hessian to be positive. Think about this. Uh, why we need Hessian to be positive, okay? Why we need we need this guy to be positive? So if this matrix is positive, it means its minimum eigenvalue is positive. So uh, its min eigenvalue is positive. And when we take the inverse, okay, minimum eigenvalue becomes the biggest. And uh, the biggest eigenvalue of this becomes the, uh, the smallest. And in this case, the inverse is positive as well. It means, it just means like, uh, uh, so um, we have our Euro P transpose matrix P is greater than zero if P is not a zero vector. So it, if it's positive, it's if it's a matrix, if it the matrix is positive, it is almost like it's a positive number, okay? So it is like this inverse of a matrix is really like a positive step size. And we do not want this to be negative. It means if our Hessian has a negative eigenvalue, ah, we don't want that because negative eigenvalue it means if a negative eigenvalue so uh this is this was in uh, one of our homework okay so if has a negative eigenvalue then what happens is um its eigenvector, we multiply its eigenvector, okay? So, um, um, so let's suppose we have an eigenval, let's say negative eigenvalue, this uh, lambda one, okay? Um, then this matrix multiply with its eigenvector V1 actually equals lambda one, okay, V1. So, Because lambda one is a negative number, this is opposite direction of v one. I mean, now if we look uh, um, back at the Newton's iteration right here, so it's perfectly possible that the gradient of f is one of the eigenvector 
of this when when it when the eigenvalue is negative. If the eigenvalue is negative, it means actually we, we are moving backward. We move like in the opposite direction of negative gradient, which means we are moving in the direction of positive gradient. So positive gradient. Is where this function increases, and it means so. Whenever we have a negative eigenvalue, and we apply Newton, and this function may not decrease at all. Okay, so that's why we need to restrict.、Um, this is positive. I I think I didn't talk about this back in、uh, Monday lecture, but here I want to emphasize why we want to. Require our Hessian to be positive. Okay, so now let's quickly recap to、um, where we have、uh, in our、um, proof we are. So the idea for these iterative method is always we subtract the minimizer on both side. So、um, we subtract the minimizer on both side. So it is.、Um, This. Okay. So so far we are repeating what we have, what、uh, we have done. Okay.、Um, and by the way,、um, we know that this is our minimizer, so local minimizer. And moreover, we know that if it's a local minimizer, the gradient at this point is zero, so we can insert artificially a gradient here. All right. So the idea is to、uh, we combine them. So this is this is the idea of the whole proof is we combine them, see if、uh, if we can have see if we can have. So our goal is. To show the norm of it less than or equal to a constant, and keep this in mind, it's quadratic convergence. So、uh, this, okay. So this is because we have quadratic convergence, and because we have quadratic convergence. This C、uh, does not have to be in、uh, zero one. So recall in linear convergence. So let's recall. So if if we have a linear convergence, okay. So if we have a linear convergence, we have to ask. So here, here, there, there is no square. There is no square. For quadratic convergence, it's it's like a first power. This is square. For linear convergence, this is first power, first power. And we for linear convergence, in order that this is convergent, we have to require、uh, the reduction factor in zero to one. This is linear convergence, and、uh, um, and this is a、uh, quadratic convergence. The goal. This is our goal. So from here, we need、uh, we need to reach here. So I mean, it's a it's a long way.、Um, so first thing to do is、uh, um, we we combine these two terms by treating this as a matrix, and uh,、um, so let me continue. So let me call this. Uh, uh, let me call this. Uh, uh, Star. Okay. And uh, um, uh, what happens here is、um, we pull out this inverse of Hessian matrix, and we multiply the Hessian matrix. So、uh, this multiply this will we will get identity. And this identity is like our x,、um, x k subtract x star, and then we subtract、um, this up. So、uh, gradient 
f of x k subtract gradient and our local minimizer. And now our goal is to combine these two terms. Okay. So the key, the key is to use Taylor expansion uh, to this one. The, the key is to use Taylor expansion to how do we use Taylor expansion is uh, uh, like in the class we, uh, we have derived um, that we had, uh, um, Oops. So here I'll directly write down the formula we have derived on, on Monday, which is uh, this subtract that. So actually equals uh, K plus the integral from zero to one uh, Hessian XK plus T times X star subtract XK. And this is a this is a matrix, and it's gonna multiply with this vector, which is x star subtract x k and uh, d t. Okay. So um, this is our Taylor. This is our Taylor expansion, and. Uh, um, what we're gonna next to do is we're just gonna use this formula and uh, uh, we replace this guy with whatever here, so uh, which is gonna be this term, okay? And now let's just uh, focus uh, on this part. So we just copy down what whatever uh, right here. Okay, so. Uh, uh, equals now we're gonna copy down uh, this thing I'm gonna directly copy down uh, so that uh, the sign matches um, first we're gonna flip okay so we're gonna flip this one so it matches with uh, here. And then we're gonna flip. Originally we had uh, this uh, gradient of F star, subtract that, and we wanna get this, okay? So overall, we can verify that uh, we'll have um, gradient. So we'll have an integral, sorry. So we'll have an integral. Let, let me save some, okay, let me still do this. So we have an integral plus. Multiply with uh, xk subtract x star dt. Now we gotta appreciate the fact that um, this has nothing to do with t, no t in it, which means we can rewrite it as uh, we can rewrite it as the integral t from zero to one. This exact same thing, dt. It, it's the reason we can write this is because this has nothing to do with. And if we integrate t, so uh, t integrate from zero to one, it's just one. This is like we multiply one to this term. And now we can combine these two terms because they are integral with respect to dt. See, if, if we combine them, okay, so we'll get uh, something like the following. And keep this in mind, keep this in mind is is let me let me scroll a little bit before. So our goal is always to combine these two terms. As we can see, they are all kind of difference. This is difference in x, but multiply with the matrix, and this is the difference in gradient. And, and we want to com combine these two differences. The way is to use Taylor, and 
if we combine them, because they are both integrals, so we can write something like that. And moreover, they have a common factor, common factor, common factor, but this common factor is a vector, but it's still common. And uh, we have um, here, subtract. Now it's the Hessian evaluate at this point, subtract the Hessian evaluate at this point. And uh, we have and the multiply with this common factor. And we're almost there. We're almost there because we have already one copy of the difference obtained. So we have um, we have a copy of, uh, of xk subtract, let me write this more legibly. So we have one copy of xk subtract x star. Our left is xk, so the left side is xk plus one subtract x star, okay? So here is the next iteration, the difference. And uh, uh, here is the previous iteration difference. Now what we're gonna do is we take uh, the norm on both sides, okay? So now we take the norm. Norm on both sides. And uh, if we take the norm on both sides, the left is gonna be this one. So this is the area of the next iteration and the right, we're gonna use cauchy schwarz inequality. Um, the right is a matrix multiply. This is actually a vector. Um, so what happens is this matrix, it's a matrix norm but it, it's the uh, inverse of the Hessian's norm. And then the norm of uh, this integral. And uh, um, here for this part, so let me call this term double star. And what happens is for double star, we have to use something. Okay, so something like this. So this is uh, this is called, uh, it's still Cauchy Schwartz, but uh, let me just write this down. So we have an integral and a maybe say uh, multiply with a vector P, okay? And DT and this. So first cauchy schwarz we're gonna use is something like this. So we can, we can move the norm to the integrand. The reason is kinda, so the proof actually requires more. We need a uh, real analysis to do that but the intuition is very straightforward. Uh, this thing can be positive or negative, but uh, if we take the norm, it's gonna be positive. And, uh, um, but there's more than that because uh, this is a vector. Um, but let's just, uh, you guys just trust me, this is true, okay? And then we apply cauchy schwarz here. So um, this is zero to one. A norm, uh, P norm, A. So that means we apply this type of uh, inequality on the double star term. And th this is like our A, this is like our P, okay? So um, this is like our matrix A, this is like our um, vector P. So we apply this and we'll get uh, something like uh, 
so let's continue um so we'll have uh double star is less than or equal to the integral becomes so original the norm is outside the integral now it's inside the integral And we, we can see we're almost there. It's because we have already a copy of this extracted. Let me remind you guys what we want to prove. This is what we want to prove. The left is this, and we have one copy of this. So we need to produce another copy of xk subtract our x star in order to get that square out there, okay? We, we already have, have this. But we need to. So now let's back here. Okay. Um, how do we magically produce that another copy of xk subtract x star is from this term? And let's recall that in the setting we said. Um, so in the setting, uh, refer to previous lecture. So uh, previous lecture. We had the setting is the Hessian of F. The Hessian of F is Lipschitz continuous. What does it mean by Lipschitz, conti uh, Lipschitz continuous in, uh, in the neighborhood? So Omega is a neighborhood uh, near the minimizer. It means for any x and y in this omega so in this small neighborhood um, the hessian evaluated at x subtract the hessian evaluated at y is less than or equal to l times x subtract y so it means that the derivative of two points are like not far away from each other if two points are not far away from each other. So as we can see, the distance of these two matrices can be bounded by the distance of these two points. It basically says F is kind of smooth, okay? So for example, uh, one over something, one over X is not smooth near X equals zero. And, but here essentially is the Hessian is smooth, okay? And for some, for some uh, L positive. And now we apply, we apply this, okay? So we apply this inequality back here. All right, and let's see what happens. When we apply this Lipschitz continuity of the Hessian here, we'll get this is less than or equal to L times the difference of these two points. And now let's look at the difference of these two points. It's xk subtract this guy, or, or this guy subtract xk. They both have xk. What's left is only this. So it's L times T times dot. Um, and it's a positive number because uh, we are taking integral of t from 0 to 1. So t should be from 0 to 1. So it's a positive number. And we can actually pull it out. We can pull it out. So it become t dt. And the rest has not actually nothing to do with t. Okay. So it's L. And now we have our square because uh, pulling out this t, then this is the same as that. So even though there are two vectors, but the norm of a vector is the same as the minus of that vector. So what we have, oops. So what we have here is xk subtract x star squared. 
and dt is gone. And uh, we have this is nothing but a L divided by two. Okay. So now we're almost there. We have proved the double star. Double star is only a part of the original right hand side. We have proved the double star right here. It's less than something. So now let's copy down this inequality. This implies the error in the next iteration can be bounded by L divided by 2. And we have another thing. Okay. We have another thing right here, which is. Uh, um, which is uh, um, the Hessian inverse norm. Um, so, and then multiply with this guy, square, okay. All right, the rest is just uh, we just need to prove this guy is not infinity, okay? So we need to prove this guy is some good number. If this is infinity, it means it has a zero eigenvalue. If this is infinity, then uh, this thing will not converge. So uh, we need to prove this one. So we need to prove this one is bounded. And now let's recall last time so recall in last lecture, uh, we said um, the minimum eigenvalue in this neighborhood so uh, is greater than or equal to mu, greater than or equal to zero for x in omega. Okay, this was our setting. So uh, in last lecture, in last in last lecture. What this actually tells us um, is uh, keep this in mind. So if uh, if A has minimum eigenvalue, uh, let's say uh, mu, and it's positive, so mu inverse actually is the biggest eigenvalue. For A inverse. It's like we invert the spectrum. So for example, if our minimum eigenvalue um, is let's say one tenth, then if we take the inverse of the matrix, the biggest eigenvalue becomes one tenth. Okay. So that actually means because of our setting, this is the inverse of a matrix. This implies. Inverse is less than or equal to mu. Inverse, okay. This is this is like a, this is like a taking exactly the reciprocal of a, of a matrix, but in norm is because we know that because uh, it has a minimum eigenvalue mu. Uh, it means this one is greater than or equal to mu. Okay, taking matrix inverse on the norm. Is very similar to like standard, uh, s standard, like uh, okay. If both are positive, so the positive is the key. If if one thing is negative, we don't have the luxury to do this. So the whole thing is the matrix is positive, then it's the matrix is positive. Then the inverse of the matrix norm is less than bounded by that. So now we're good. Now we use this result back here. So now we have the quadratic convergence. So uh, I think that we I, I have a one over two. Okay, here we go. This is actually well done. 
we have proved the quadratic convergence. Uh, the idea is, so this is a quadratic convergence and this is the constant um, of the convergence. And we don't have to require this constant to be zero to one because we have a square here. Um, uh, this the reason is because if this term is small, the square will be much much smaller. It converges much 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 faster than uh, this one. So we don't have to have um, like a linear contraction because this is already uh, converges in a much faster rate than linear. So overall, this is a this is a convergence in Newton, and right now. Um, I'm gonna um, share my screen so that uh, we'll learn how to use a package uh, called uh, SciPy Optimize. Okay. So let me share uh, my computer screen. All right. Um, if someone cannot see my computer screen, you can tell me in the chat. So uh, if no one tells me in the chat, uh, I assume everyone can see my computer screen. So again, um, so I want to say uh, this is our friend or, or, or our uh, enemy. Okay. Um, so we want to find the minimizer of uh, the Rosenbrock function in our class. Um, and in the homework, it's a BO function. I mean, they, they are equally inf infamous in the optimization community because, for example, the Rosenbrock, uh, the Rosenbrock function has this, uh, this valley that has nearly zero gradient, and the BO function has a huge plateau, like the gradient is almost zero. Okay. And today, actually, what I want to say is the Rosenbrock function has a generalization to n dimension. Okay, so it's right here. Uh, in in capital n dimension, this is our Rosenbrock function, and it has exactly one local minimizer at one, one, one. Okay, um, so so when n equals three, it's one, one. A uh, one, and when n is two, it's one one. So basically, the the, the local minimizer is just a capital N copies of one. Okay, and essentially we wanna um, we wanna do this. So what we wanna do is we uh, use SciPy um, optimize package. So uh, let's go to VS Code, and uh, um, so let me magnify this a bit. Um, again, the utils, the utils in our uh, repository is just uh, helping us to plot the gradient descent. It's nothing fancy. And of course, we import NumPy. Um, this is a package. It's SciPy optimized. Um, SciPy is, uh, is a very, very useful package. I mean, if you guys have taken maybe, say, a spectral analysis, um, or you may have already seen uh, this package. Um, so let's import SciPy here. Let, let's import SciPy here. Let's re-import SciPy. So uh, let's import SciPy. And uh, um, let's help. Help SciPy. My computer is kind of slow. Um, I have a fast Linux computer, but that one doesn't have camera. Um, so that's too bad. Um, okay, here we go. Um, wow, it's so long. Um, okay. For example, oh, it's trim. Okay, never mind. So let, let's, let, let me Google it. Um, this is SciPy, okay. Um, 
it has a various i would say it has various uh, uh so essentially sci pi even though uh it has non pi but uh what i mean by sci pi is really it's the sci pi some module here so i python sim pi pandas map lolly but just something else what i really mean is the sci pi library here all right um Where is that? Why? Um, why don't I have some documentation? SciPy. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm saying. Um, so SciPy is some high-level API uh, right here. Um, so it has a various high-level API. What I mean by high-level API is we don't have to implement everything by ourselves. So almost all functions are built in. We only need to call those functions. And for example, uh, it has this many. Um, it has Fourier transform, signal processing, linear algebra. We have already used some linear algebra package, for example, uh, functions, for example, linear algebra norm. And it has interpolation. It has optimize. So uh, optimize is what uh, we want to use. And optimize has lots of functions, actually. Uh, what we want to use is a function called minimize uh, right here. So it's so what we want to use, let me magnify this even more. The minimize is the function we want to learn to use today. OK, let's click. And uh, um, so not only um, we are learning how do we use this package today, we would also to learn how do we read the documentation of a, of a package. There are very many mature package um, that uh, we need to learn how to read the manuals, like for our future research for example, uh, right here, this is the function. And it has, these are the arguments, okay? Args means argument, but these are also like arguments. And whenever we see these method equals none, so whenever we see these are equal, it means uh, uh, they are like, sometimes they are optional. And Jack means uh, Jacobian, it's essentially gradient. Uh, Jack just means uh, Jacobian, it means gradient. And this has means Hessian, as you can guess. And I forgot uh, what this has P is, but let, let me check it. Um, oh, I see. So um, you can also, so this, uh, okay, let me say this. So this Hessian is like a true Hessian. It's like a function. This has P is like our numerical Hessian. We can compute it for a specific vector P. So the bounds is, for example, we don't want our uh, algorithm to diverge and we can artificially put a bound on where uh, we search our points and we have then constraint. Constraint means, for example, um, it's similar to bounds, but we can have more general constraint. For example, we can have a con equation constraint. We can constrain like X plus B. I'm sorry, we can constrain uh, the first component of x plus the second component of x is one something like that and then this tolerance is similar to the tolerance we have set i'm not sure if i can get to callback so but uh, in my sample code uh, i wrote a function like uh, we learn how to use this callback function actually this callback function is pretty useful in advanced level of, uh, of functions and uh, um, so now let's dive into my sample code. Um, so we have, we have, uh, um, so we have implement this optimize module. Um, it's uh, basically scalar function optimization or even vector function uh, optimization if you define the vector function properly. So after we, uh, we implement that, of course, we have our Euro friend or enemy, Rosenbrock function. So uh, 
and then we plot like euro. So, and this is our Rosenbrock function. Uh, we have a long and thin alley right here. Uh, if we apply our euro gradient descent, it will get stuck maybe even somewhere here. So here I copy down the help file from the minimize, which we just read. First of all, it says f is callable, which is the first argument of this minimize. Um, callable just means you can you can call the function. So what do I mean by function call is, uh, for example, if I do func uh, one one. And this is literally a function call. One one is our local minimizer. So what I mean by uh, call is uh, this is a function call. It's it's even uh, uh, like eventually you are evaluating this function. And what we want to do is uh, we can. So this function uh, cannot be some expressions. It has to be evaluatable. It means we can plug in uh, values to this function. Of course, this is uh, x0 is our um, initial guess. And uh, so uh, method, what we want to use, the method is called, uh, is Newton CG. I'm not sure if I, um, oh, right here. The method for computing the gradient vector. And uh, what we want to use here is Newton CG. Newton CG is actually the algorithm we learned to implement last Friday. Okay, so right now it's like a SciPy implemented, and uh, um, as we learned earlier, so uh, Jack is just a gradient, and its array-like shape is n, comma nothing. So what I mean, what here it means array-like is mean. It, it means it can be, for example, a list. It's like an array. So what, I'm, what I mean by array-like is, uh, for example, I can generate an array to be something like this. All right? So this is a NumPy array, but inside the input of this array, this is a list. Okay. Um, it means our uh, gradient can be also a list, but uh, in general, it should be uh, array-like. So it's array. And uh, um, the Hessian, so in Newton CG, we actually, we don't have to specify uh, the Hessian. So uh, the function will actually uh, compute the Hessian for us based on um, the gradient we give this function. So now let's look at a new Rosenbrock function um, implementation. This is actually this is actually a Rosenbrock function uh, in n dimension. What I mean by n dimension is exactly uh, Rosenbrock function right here. So we compute one hundred times this, and here I use a very compact way um, of implementing it, okay? So it's uh, xi plus one subtract xi square. Um, then this is like a vector. So it's like uh, it has uh, x2 subtract x1, x3 subtract x2. And we form this as a vector like this. Okay, and then we multiply with 100. So if we run this cell, oops, sorry, already, um, I think I need to put a little comment right here. So if we run this cell, we, we, we see that the Rosenbrock function, um, the Rosenbrock function is, um, for example, we can give this Rosenbrock function uh, one, one, it's like a 2D function, okay? Um, let me see. Aha, list, my bad. So I need to still do array. Let me still do array. So x equals numpy array one, one. And it has to be float. So let me put 1.1 1 .1 here. So now let's do Rosenbrock uh, x. 
as we can see, it's zero zero. Right now we are in 2D, but uh, uh, like I said, this implementation can can work in arbitrary dimension. For example, right now we are in a four dimensional uh, vector. And uh, let's try Rosenbrock uh, X. So uh, its minimum value is zero zero. So it it's it's really works for anything. Okay. And next is how do we call our um, minimize function? So here we have our um, um, we have our um, function call here. Okay. Oops. Um, right here, this is how we call our function. So we just do this. First is our Rosenbrock. Uh, which is our function and the Jacobian is a gradient we implement so here I implement the gradient and uh, again this is uh, um, this is like a, a very general implementation it uses zero like zero like means for example so we have our x four dimensional right um, if we do zero like it automatically matches the dimension. So for example, now it's like a, the same dimension, it's just a zero, so that we don't have to artificially uh, re retrieve the dimension. And uh, um, if we care less about the dimension, the, our method will be more likely to be bug free. Okay. And again, so this is our Jacobian. Uh, this is how we call minimize. Come on. Why it's still loading? Okay. Okay, I guess the helper file can cannot load it. But uh, um, this is our function. It's our fun, and this is x zero. And the method we use is Newton CG. And let's let's first start with positive four four. And the Jacobian is just grad. Display true and callback is print. Callback is print means we just literally call back the print function right here. So uh, this is, we literally call this print function during the evaluation. So if we run this cell and uh, uh, we'll see that the print got called. So um, it will print the intermediate value at every iteration. For example, after one iteration we are here and after um, 43 iteration, we reached our um, minimizer we would like to find um, with a tolerance of uh, one 10 to the negative six power, okay? And we have function evaluation 70 and gradient evaluation uh, 158. Uh, why we have so many gradient uh, iteration is because we have to numerically compute Hessian using gradient. That's why it's uh, so many. So that's why the gradient uh, evaluation is more than uh, function evaluation. So this is, this is normal. And so um, that's it for today. So next time we'll learn some more advanced uh, is how do we use uh, a callback function. So I don't have time to go through that today, um, but uh, next time we'll learn uh, how do we use a callback function um, and how uh, do we get the history. So that's it for today. Okay, so um, 